Hi guys. Sorry. Is this on? Sorry guys. Is it on right? Sorry guys. When everyone's ready. Shh. Um, first of all, I'd like to welcome you all to the HSE Meadow presentation. Um, Professor Elish McGovern is going to go through intern application for 2015. All right. So this is um, my uh, third year to come out um, here um, with my colleague Patricia from the Met Unit and Anna, we have another colleague who's taking photos for our website. Um, so it's really to um, give you a preparatory session on the intern match. Uh, so the, the um, application process will open in October and every year there are people who um, miss out. It's a bit like the CAO process. Uh, unless you get absolutely everything right, you could find yourselves with an invalid application or, and a lot of regrets afterwards. So really we're here to give you, first of all, Patricia will give you an overview of the process and then we'll answer any questions that you have. So I'll hand over to Patricia. How are you doing? Um, it'd be handy if I could work this one. <laughs> The topics we're going to cover today, firstly, I'll just talk you through briefly the HSE's Medical and Education Training Unit, and then we'll concentrate on intern training and specifically the intern training application and appointment system, and then we'll take whatever questions that you have. Um, the MET unit, the current priorities that we have in medical education and training, the intern year has changed dramatically over the last number of years through the introduction of VWTD, the intern networks, and it's continuing to change. The reform process is continuing um, at a pace. There's also um, a lot of changes in Ireland, as you may be aware, in how ba basic specialist training and higher specialist training um, processes are delivered. You may be aware that we're moving much more away from BST and HST structure more to a streamlined training structure. We can certainly take any questions on that at the end if, if you have any. The other priority that we have at the moment is that of workforce planning and projections. I mean, we've been tasked by the Department of Health of putting in place a workforce plan to ensure that we're training the right amount of doctors for the right amount of specialties at the end. So that, you know, we, we know in 20 years' time as much as we can how many cardiologists we need, how many pediatricians we need, and we're adjusting the training numbers accordingly. Okay, so intern training in Ireland there is delivered through a structure of intern training networks. Um, the training programme is delivered and developed through a system of service level agreements that the um, HSE have with the six medical schools in the country. We oversee in MET the distribution of intern posts throughout the country. We've also seen um, a change in the specialty areas. Uh, traditionally, I think a lot of people did an internship in medicine and surgery. But people obviously want to branch out into different specialties. So we're putting in as many posts as we can into different specialty areas. And we have responsibility for the national application and matching process. So these are the intern training networks that are throughout the country. They're all linked to the medical schools. As you will see from the map, um, they're not all geographically linked. For, so for example, the RCSI network have posts in Waterford, and the UCD network is also have posts um, out in Port Leash, Mullingar, so the UCD network isn't exclusively Dublin, and the RCSI network also isn't exclusively Dublin. So each training network is led by an intern coordinator who is a physician within the network. You, you probably do all know Mr. Darren Monley, who's based here um, in <coughs> Beaumont. So I mentioned earlier about the specialty areas. Obviously, when people are doing their internship, it's an opportunity for them, for yourselves, to work in different specialties that you have an interest in outside of medicine and surgery. So for medical council guidelines, you need to spend three months in medicine and three months in surgery. And outside of that, you can spend time in these um, anesthetics, pedi pediatrics, psych, radiology, emergency medicine, obs and gynae, and GP. Um, these posts we do, we do find are quite popular, and we're putting in as many more as we can. So the application and matching system is in place since 2010, so you will be the fifth group to go through this system. The main considerations are that you have a medical degree that was obtained in Europe, and you were in two years of graduation. So some people take a break after they the graduate, take a year off, and come back and apply uh, a year later. It's a completely online process. 
So this year, we had over 680 posts in the uh, interim posts throughout the system, and we expect to hold that around 680, 700 posts uh, this year. It's a two-step application <coughs> process. Stage one will open the end of October. Now, it's only open for two weeks, but you'll all be aware of it. We work through the medical schools. We noti we'll notify the medical schools of when it's opening, and then you will be notified in, in due course. I will say at this point, and it's very important to state, that it's, it's your responsibility to ensure that your application is complete and is delivered by the deadline. The deadline will be at 5, five o'clock on a Friday. And if it's, your application isn't in by 5 o'clock, if it arrives at 10 past 5 or half 5 or 10 to 6, it's late and it, it may not be included. And then you, if, if you're late, you have to go to a third party appeals process, which you may not win. I mean, I've seen people who did put in late applications, they, they appealed and it wasn't upheld and they had to wait an entire year for their internship. So it's very important that you don't leave it to the last minute to apply. The other thing of the other point of note is that we will get let's say 1100 applications within about two days now when we get your application you get an automatic email back from us saying we've received your application now firstly if you don't get an email back from us very quickly contact us um, but also we don't open all 1100 in those two days it'll be next the following week by the time we go through them all so if you're missing a piece of information like for example a scanned copy of your passport again you have an invalid application <coughs> and we have a problem. Again, that your post has to go to third party um, appeals tribunal and it just adds to huge stress for yourselves. So it just, you know, if you can, just make sure you make it as complete as possible. The post, the actual jobs, aren't actually advertised until stage two in March. So the first stage is just very much, you know, some personal details um, and your education details. Okay, so as I said, the first stage is in, is in October and it's all, um, it's, it's all by email. If you're eligible, and you will be, everybody here will be eligible, eligible, you'll proceed to stage two. We will invite you to stage two, but you will then have to go and apply for stage two. That'll happen in March, and this is when your post preferences and your network preferences, this is when you actually go through all the posts and pick out the posts that you are interested in applying for. We ask you to uh, apply for up to 50 posts. So you go through all the 700 jobs and you pick out your top 50. Um, you can apply to anywhere in the country. You're not restricted to your own medical school. You can apply to any anywhere you like. Some people do concentrate in particular locations. Some people only want to work in Dublin or if they're from Cork, they want to return to Cork, whatever. Other people just are interested in particular specialties. So if somebody's interested in nephrology, for example, they might go through the whole system and pick out all the nephrology posts in the country. I will say to consider carefully, you know, if there's something that you specifically do not want, you know, don't put it down on your list. Because every year we do get people saying, you know, I'm after getting this post, I don't want this post, but it was actually on your top 50. Uh, and once you get a post, that's it. There's no second round of offers. So can you see this? Um, this is what the posts actually look like. So each post has a number. So for example, the first one is Dublin DNE's Dublin Northeast and two, uh, 274. And that's all here in, in Beaumont. And you can see that it's medicine, surgery, the different specialties. So you'll go through the document, which is it's a, just a very large document with 700 jobs in it with different numbers. And you pick out your top 50 posts that, that you want. And I would say, take your time at it. I mean, it, you know, there's a lot in it. Go through it, can really do consider it carefully. So how the posts are awarded, they're done on your centile. So your centile is a measure of the rank of, your, of an individual against the peers in their own class. It doesn't include your actual marks or your degree level, and it doesn't compare uh, degrees from different schools. You don't have to send us your centile. We get the centile submitted uh, collectively by the deans of the medical schools. So just when you're completing the form, it comes with a guide, and I would say to just read the notes carefully because everything is, is in that guide. Obviously, it has to be typed. There's no handwritten, handwritten applications accepted. Do use all your 50 preferences. I mean, we do get applications with 10 preferences. I only want those. And, you know, if we, go, if we get to that part, if we get to someone's application like that and they've only put down 10 um, actual posts, and this person qualifies for a post, we will just give them a job. And you know, it may not be something that somebody wants at all, but no one has given us any guidance. So 
just make sure you do use the 50 options. And then what we ask you to do is if for some reason we can't give you one of your 50 uh, prefer preference, post preferences, we say use your network options. So if you don't get any of these 50, where would you like to work? What network would you like? So if we get to you and all your 50 posts are gone, well, we say, well, actually, they want to work in Cork, so we'll give them a Cork job. They don't want to work in Dublin, we'll find a, job, find a post in Dublin. We'll look back what your preferences were, if there's anything specific, and we'll hopefully come up with a job for you. Once the form is in in March and it's closed, it's closed. That's it. You know, there's lots of time to think about it, so we don't accept changes after that. And you really, at that time as well, need to put in all the supporting documentation. The other th issue that is a big bugbear every year is the Garda vetting form. Um, Garda vetting is something that you all have to submit. And even if you have a previously for a sporting organisation, a voluntary organisation, or as a student, unfortunately, it's required again for employment purposes. So just to go over the matching process, we get the centiles in mid-May. We put together a national ranked list. We start, we start with the top ranked candidate to what their top ranked post was, and we work our way down from there. If we have two candidates with the same centile, want the same post, it's purely a random assignment between them. It very seldom happens now. If the post preferences are exhausted, so if we get to you, all the 50 posts you want are gone, we'd start working down the networks that you have um, requested and a lower ranked candidate cannot displace a higher ranked candidate. So at the end of that, if, if all the posts are gone and we still have people who haven't been matched, we put together a reserve list. And people are matched off the reserve list every year, I must say. So on the allocation of offers, there's just one offer, one allocation in May. And you will be notified by email. Now, the actual communication process will be um, you, you, you'll be advised when you're going to get your email. Now, you, may not, you won't get your email necessarily from medical school that, you have been, um, that you've been at, because you'll get the your notification from the medical school where you get your post from, so you'd have to keep an eye out for that. You have three days to accept or reject the offer. There is no second round offer, there are no deferrals, and there's no swapping. We always get lots of requests for swaps. Um, at the time, you'll get all your information um, about your induction, all that kind of employment information as well. Now, I would stress a, a couple of things. One, the timelines are really important. You know, if, you just, if you're you know, sitting on a beach somewhere and you don't get back for two weeks, your post will be gone. You know, we, you know, we don't hear back from you. We will offer the post elsewhere. But also, through the process, and I know everybody is looking at different options. I mean, if people are looking at FY, um, options in the UK or US options or you know everyone has, has different things they're looking at if if you're not going to take a post an internship in Ireland and you know that from March or April we really would request that you withdraw your application you can do that at any time right up until the match starts and the reason being is that if you're offered a post and you reject the post, the post doesn't go to the next person on the list. The, the post goes to the, the reserve list. So it's something that causes a lot of upset every year. So we just say, if you are going to withdraw, that's fine. I can fully understand people applying for internship and applying for FY and applying for F residency. But once you, ha you have a match and you know you're going to do whatever you're going to do, if you're, going to withdraw, if you're not going to take your internship in Ireland, if you could withdraw it, we would, really would appreciate it. So the Medical Council registration, this is a completely different uh, process to the HSE, but you must be registered as an intern on the trainee specialist division, and it's completely separate from ourselves here in the HSE. So do certainly inform yourself of, of the council process. The way it works is we will, you apply for registration as an intern trainee, and we send the Medical Council a list of all the people who have got intern posts. There's a match takes place, and then you're registered. But every year, again, there's problems with people not being registered. And you cannot work unless you have this registration. So for example, last year, on the Friday, everyone should start on Monday. On Friday, I was still looking at a list of 19 names that weren't registered as, as doctors. And those people couldn't start on Monday. Now, they did all get sorted in the week. But again, you're starting behind everybody. It's a lot of stress for yourselves. You're behind your peer group. Your hospitals aren't happy with you because you're late. So just inform yourself of the process. and just It's generally down to 
small piece of documentation not be submitted to the Medical Council. And if you don't, if you do have an issue, you know, do get on to your employer, do get on to the Medical Council, and just, you know, it will be resolved. Just don't think the Medical Council will resolve it. The intern, just on the guard of vetting, again, a huge amount of this, of grief every year around guard of vetting. The guard of vetting is a national form, it's not a HSE form. Um, but what you need to do, and the mistake that everybody makes is that if you, you have to put down every address you, you've ever lived at in Ireland and Northern Ireland. So if you leave gaps, if you leave a six month gap or a 12 month gap, the form will be rejected and you have to submit it again. And it's just a time consuming thing. And we can't employ you until we have your guard of vetting complete. If you have lived abroad since you were 15 for more than six months, you have to get overseas police clearance as well. And you need to provide that to your employer when you're, when you're taking a post. So just induction, induction is mandatory for all interns. When you get your offer your post, you'll get your details of your induction. It's handled by the intern training network. It's usually in the first hospital you'll be working in or in a central location. So generally the RCSI will run a central induction program for all interns and then you'll go out to the individual hospitals if you're starting outside the main centre. It will include skills training as well. There's been a big move to ensure that people do have the skills they need when they go out into the patient areas, so the first part of your induction will have a level of skills training. So from an employment perspective, the pre-employment checks your employers will do, so your employer would be the HSC for, in a lot of cases, but also it will be the voluntary hospitals or private hospitals, wherever you actually start your, um, your internship. Firstly, you check your references, and we'd also, you also have an occupational health check. One thing we have included in the form is we've asked for voluntary disclosure, that if anybody has particular supports they need in, in, in employment, do let us know. It is a voluntary disclosure, but if there is some supports that you need that we know in advance before you start your post so that there is no delay in, in the, for you so before we put something in place. So if there is a disability or just some support you need, just let us know in advance on the form. Again, it's completely voluntary, but it would help and it'll help you, yourselves. The contract of employment that you will, um, that you sign, it's a standard contract of employment for, for all non-consultant hospital doctors. And the commencement date is July 13th next year. Um, hopefully we'll see you all then. To sign off on the intern year, at the end of your intern year, the Medical Council issued the certs of experience and that's what you all need. It's it's, the Certified Experience is um, issued following the successful sign-off for all the, uh, from all your trainers and the intern network coordinators. Most people get through internship. You know, every year there's one or two people, for whatever reason, may need some extra time, but most people successfully get through their internship. So just while I have your attention, we have a Medical Careers Day that we're running on Saturday week in Dublin Castle. Um, we'd, now, we only, have, I think, have a few places left in it, but it's a really good um, day where you can come and meet all the postgraduate training bodies are there and we also have full sessions on you know cv and interview training it's a it's a very good it's a it's the opportunity for you to meet both people who are in postgraduate training and the people who run postgraduate training in ireland now i know you might think well i have to go through my final meds and I have to get my internship but actually this time next year that's what you will all be thinking you'll be thinking where where do i go to from here Okay. So, any questions? Sorry, Eilish, do you want to add? Thanks, Patricia. Just uh, to emphasise some of the things that Patricia has already said. Um, firstly, about withdrawing your name once you know that you have made a decision to go elsewhere and not to seek an internship. Um, we know that, for example, the Foundation Year offers for the UK and the match um, process in um, Canada and the United States are all in the spring. So we would encourage everybody, keep your options open, apply for the internship in October. But if you have an offer um, elsewhere, and it's your intention to take up that offer, um, it's really, really important that you withdraw your name. And you can just do that by emailing. Because as Patricia has pointed out, the, the way that intern posts are allocated, it's not like the CAO process where if you turn down, if somebody um, turns down an offer, as I think this year, in, after the first round, there were 64 places freed up for medicine, which I thought was, was phenomenal. 
then um, they're offered to the people uh, who had ranked medicine highest. And as you can imagine, there's a cascade effect then. 64 vacancies were created in other um, faculties in the universities. Now, we can't do that because of the very tight time frame between the match being made and between internships and induction starting. So unlike the CAO, everybody gets one offer. So there will be 680 odd offers made in the end of May, beginning of June. If somebody turns down an offer, and this year there were, I think it was 19 offers turned down, they go to number 681, 682, 683. Do you, do you know what I mean? They're not gonna go back. The people who are in the first 680 are not going to find that someone gets an improved offer. So the result of that is that some very popular and highly sought after internships um, can go to people who were ranked actually quite low in the process um, just by serendipity. So it's your peers who will be affected and perhaps disadvantaged if you've already made up your mind to go elsewhere and you forget to withdraw your name. So at any time you can withdraw right up to the 11th hour literally the Friday before the match is made, you can withdraw your name. So we just want to um, say that very strongly to you. The other thing is um, about um, making your selections. As, 50, as Patricia said, you have 50 um, options. Uh, we might just put up, um, Patricia, that this is number 13 here. Um, there are... <coughs> 680 posts, um, about 300, 350 of those are in Dublin or Cork or Galway. But some of them are mixed. They would be partly, um, say, six months Dublin, six months in a peripheral hospital, or nine months Dublin, three months in a peripheral hospital, say. Or some of them are entirely in mixtures of peripheral hospitals. People tend to put their preferences down for the larger urban areas, which is completely understandable. And if you're a high performer, because this is done on centile ranking, if you're a high performer, then you're very likely to get one of your top 50, if not within your top 10. But if you're somebody who's, you're all really, really bright people, you had to be to get into medicine, but there will be some of you who are in, who are not going to perform as well as others. And if you feel that you're not going to perform as well as some of your peers, you need to be careful as to how you rank your post. Because if you rank all the teaching hospitals, um, you're going to be outranked by people who get a higher centile than you. And you could end up being offered a post that you didn't put in your 50. So you need to think tactically when you're filling in your forms. So for example, the posts that are um, there's, there's a post that's three months Kappa Hospital, nine months matter, and it's, it's, not, it's not ranked very highly. But if you think about it, um, if you want to stay in Dublin and you want to stay in a major teaching hospital, getting nine months there and spending three months in a, in a hospital like Kappa, which is only down the road, it's a very good compromise, and you're much more likely to get that job if your centile ranking is lower than your peers. So bear that in mind. So the other thing is is to look at the posts in terms of which do you think would be the most popular. So the most popular ones are the ones in the major teaching hospitals, the ones um, with the, the professors, because they're always really highly sought after posts, and in particular specialties. So for example, the, the rotations that include anesthetics, general practice, pediatrics, emergency medicine, they're very highly sought after. So it may be that if, you're, if you don't perform as well as you would hope to in your exams, people who got in a higher centile will have already got all of those jobs. So just think tactically um, when you're filling out your 50 options and consider the likelihood that um, where you think you might be in your class and the likelihood, therefore, of, of whether you will get one of the really popular posts or whether you need to think sideways, think laterally, and how would you get your desired outcome but perhaps by picking a post that's less popular. And the final thing is just about the, um, the timing of posts. See, the first post here, um, which is a Beaumont Hospital post, uh, coincidentally, the, uh, the, there will be 680 descriptors like this. So, um, as I said, this, this is 274. There will be 680 
online for you to choose from, each with usually four three-month slots. In Cork, they're still doing six two-month slots, and there are occasional internships which are three four-month slots, but the vast majority are four three months. The, the thing about the, the way um, these are um, organized is that this also represents the chronological order in which you will do the three months. So this particular post starts in July with three months nephrology. And this intern will go to gastroenterology in October, orthopedics in January, and general vascular surgery in April. Now, there will be three other posts probably called DNE 275, 276, and 277, where the order will be different. So one of those will have the gastroenterology first, orthopedics second, general third, and nephrology last. And one will start with orthopedics, and one will start with general surgery. So for each grouping of four modules, there will be four options, and the only difference between them is where you start and where you finish. And the reason that might be relevant is if you want to do surgery, then you will ideally want to do your six-month surgery in the first six months of your internship so that when you're applying for BST in surgery, you will have some experience. Uh, you may have um, picked up um, a little bit of research or an audit, and you might have done a poster or a presentation which will be very valuable for competing for BST. And you will, be, you will want to use surgeons as your referees that you've worked with. So it may be that if you want to apply for surgery, you, you should consider picking internships where surgery is the first six months. And similarly for anesthetics or general practice, for example, because we know that um, in those specialties, when it comes to the BST selection process and the interviews, some of them actually give marks for people who already have experience in the specialty. So that's another thing to bear in mind, is the order in which the um, specialties occur in the rotation, because that might influence your um, selection of your 50 posts. So there are just, some, just three uh, things just to note. And as Patricia said, we're very happy to answer any questions that you have now. Pardon? Sorry, yourself. Sorry, first. Yeah. I have three questions for you. Three, okay. First, um, what's in the central ranking? Do they rank based on all the years or the first year? No, it's your final med result. Yeah. Okay. Your degree. Yeah. Um, what percentage of applicants are applicants for that? Like, what percentage end up matching? Yeah. Well, it was, there were, um, can I answer that? Yeah, work you, way. There were 1,100 applicants this year, but uh, about 200 were ineligible for various reasons, usually people applying from outside of Ireland. But sometimes there are duplicates. There were about 900 left. But for stage two, um, there were, I think, about 790, something like that, and there were 640 posts. 680 posts. Well, this yeah. year. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry, this is 680. 680. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you can do the maths for the percentage. Yeah, there's a large percentage of people are matched. Yeah. 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 And my third question is, if you're not an Irish citizen, um, how does that affect you in the ranking process? Like, does it only give you like, the remaining spot faster, or is it evaluated if you need a work permit to work in Ireland? Okay, so those who don't need a work permit to work in Ireland, so the people who are EEA citizens or people who have a permission on their um, permission to work in Ireland, it's called a stamp for, stamp for EU fam, those type of stamps in your passport, they're matched first, that, that is correct. And then uh, those who need a work permit are matched after that. Okay. The Dublin Castle event is, is also that now, is it? Um, well, certainly, I'll, we'll, we'll, we must have had a real surge in the last little while of people applying. I'll have a look at it and see if we, we may be able to increase the number of spaces, but maybe have a look at the next day or two and we'll see if we can increase the number of spaces. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, 
Everybody asks us that every year, and really, um, the reason that we kind of don't publish it as such is that the posts change every year, because every year we take out posts and we put in posts. The ones that are very popular, that you need high centres for, really, um, for some reason, the PEDS posts, uh, GP training posts, um, and as Professor McGovern said, and professorial posts, they're the posts that seem to have the highest ranking, and also, you know, posts within the, the large urban centres. That's what you find. Sorry, yourself first, yeah. Yeah, sorry. My, my understanding, because this question was asked in Galway, my understanding from the university was that it was just the, the centiles, our calcul medical schools calculate centiles for the whole class, but they separately <coughs> calculate centiles for the people who've applied for the internship. Yes. And that's the, the centile list that's used for the match. Okay, sorry, it's just a microphone. Sorry, yourself. <laughs> A large percentage of people who need visas match. Um, no, I don't, I don't have the figures really off the top of my head, but a large percentage of people who need visas, working visas, do match to posts in, in Ireland. So it really is worth your while applying that um, the chances of you being matched are, are quite high. I think it was, it was almost 60 this year. Yeah. Almost 60. Um, no, I, it's, it's not. It's um, that's how many people were offered posts. But you'll find that uh, percentage-wise, I don't actually know what percentage th that is. But there is a large percentage of people who are offered posts. Sorry, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Francis. Sorry. Uh, is, this, is the salary the same for every post, and what? Yes, the salary. <laughs> <laughs> The salary is the same for every post, yes. The basic salary is 32,000 euro, and then the overtime then is on top of that. Okay, sorry. Same question, okay. <laughs> when you say high like centiles for like PEDS, like how high? For PEDS, there aren't a huge amount of PEDS uh, posts in the country, so they're really, well, or CSI have one. Now, when we're saying that's one, that's four posts because it's broken down. Um, there's PEDS posts in Cork, in Tala, and there's UCD posts in Temple Street as well. So probably the top, I don't know, top 10 percent really I've seen. Yeah. One. Yep. There is no cost for the application process. I actually don't know that. I don't know the cost for that one. Gosh, I don't know. Yeah. Sorry, yourself. The references? Yeah, so we usually use Cockdale, Cockdale, and then one of their. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's. I think the, the process is very well managed by the medical schools. You'll find yourself really supported through the process by, by the, the medical schools. Um, so it, it, there's not an awful lot of information you have to go and get separately. Yeah. Yeah, the guard vetting form is required in March in stage two. Uh, no. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? You'll be asked in um, in stage two in March. For, you'll be asked for stage two in March for contact details for um, June when the offer comes out. And I think you only have three days, is it? Yes, 48 hours. well, really 48 hours. So really. it, it's much shorter than the CAO, again, because of the fact that it's not like starting university perhaps in October. You'd be starting working on the 13th of July for your year of 2015. And induction starts the previous Monday the 6th. And in fact, in um, St. James's this year, it started the previous Thursday again, which was, you know, like the fourth or something. 
So because of that, it isn't two weeks like the CAO. I think it's 48 hours. Mm. So you might be on the top of Kilimanjaro, and, and you will be asked in uh, March for contact details. And you need to think ahead as to what your plans are. And if you're not going to be available, that a parent or a, you know, somebody that you nominate is going to accept that email um, and, um, and make a decision on your behalf. Just to think. It, you don't have to do that until March, but it is something you will be asked for. Mm. Yeah. Yep. No, you need to get, um, what, in round one of the match, there's non -E, uh, sorry, all the EEA systems and those who have what we call unlimited um, access to the labour market. So you'd have a particular stamp in your passport, like a stamp four. So if you require a work permit to work in Ireland, you would be in the, the second round of the match. So the, the examples are a non-EEA person who's married to an EEA person. They don't need a work permit. <laughs> adopted by somebody. Yeah. Well, I hadn't thought of that. Okay. <laughs> Tell them that. Okay. The other... Um, okay. The, the other um, stamp four issues, if you have a parent who's... Um, uh, and lots of people do, who, who is a have a parent who has an EU citizenship as well. So, if you get yourself adopted between now and next year, that might help as well. So, they're, the, they're, they're generally the areas that you find people have stamp fours for. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, yourself? Yes. It's just, yes. No, you could, yeah. The, the results go out at the same time. And, what, and a lot of non EU people are matched in round one as well. So what happens is the job offers go out, or you get told you're on the reserve list one or the other, okay? So um, a lot of, you know, uh, 50 non-EU people were matched in round one this time. So it's, it's not a different process. So they, all the offers and the reserve list notification go out on the same day. Yeah. So um, this, last year we had 25, we asked um, applicants to rank 25 posts. And um, it took a lot of rounds to fill all the posts. Whereas this year, we asked them to rank 50 posts. And it meant that the matching was completed very quickly. Because more people, um, uh, there weren't round after round after round. Because pe people had ranked all the posts that they wanted to have. So with only 24 hours between rounds, the final offers were made very quickly. Uh, but. Um, there were um, uh, non-EEA offers made in the first round because there are less EEA people applying for posts than there are posts available. And just to say, um, it's, in the, it's in stage one that your EEA, non-EEA status is um, uh, assessed. Um, because you're asked to send in a scanned copy of your passport as part of round one. So that's uh, how um, people's eligibility for whether they need a work permit or not is established early on. <laughs> yep. Hi, sorry. Um, let's say a, like a, Romanian, a Romanian medical uh, graduate from Romania applies. Would he be like, offered a job ahead of an international Irish medical graduate? For people who apply from medical schools outside of Ireland. So we would have people from the UK and people from... Poland from, you know, as you said, people within the EU. With, there is um, a, a test, an employment test that they need to sit. It's called a, a, the Irish Employment Eligibility Test. So they need to go to, uh, so they're tested on things that you've already been tested here in, in Ireland. That if there was an EU citizen 
who has graduated from an EU university and successfully passes through that, the two stages of that test, they're deemed to be um, an, an EEA citizen. Yes, is the answer to your question, providing they have successfully matched through that or successfully got through that test. The numbers are very small. They're in the single figures out of 680. Yeah. But for EU law, they, they are... Um, uh, they must be treated equally to... Each EEA citizen must be treated equally regardless of the country. Um, there will be two weeks, but we will, you'll be notified in advance. We haven't exactly set the dates, but it'll be before the end of October, and you will be, you'll be well notified in, in advance. Sorry, Asaf. Sorry. Yep. Uh, hypothetically, upon graduation, say if someone wanted to go find themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, then you have a problem. Um, they, it, it's actually for three years. It, it's two years, okay? But there's actually three rounds that you can apply in because it's two calendar years. So you'd apply this year, to be next year, and there'll be the following year. But it, if, you are, if you decide to go off for 10 years, five years, you really have missed the, the possibility of getting an internship in Ireland. And to be honest with you, if you think about it, you're, you know, you will have lost it, the skill and all the knowledge that, that you have gained here. So it, that's why we keep it at the two years. And, and I think my understanding is, I might be wrong, but my understanding is that it's a medical council requirement because on the basis that Patricia described, that in order to utilise the knowledge that you've um, just spent a number of years obtaining, that after beyond two years it was felt that you, you wouldn't be able to do that. So there is no other alternative to, um, as Patricia said, two years actually gives you three, three opportunities to apply for the intern match, the year you graduate, the following year, and the following year. So we did look um, this year at the numbers of interns who were successful in the match, who had graduated in the three years, and all but, I think, 18, if I, if I remember rightly, had graduated in the current year, and I think there were 12 from last year and something like six in the previous year. We're guessing that the 12 were more likely to be repeats. Uh, but six people who graduated in 2012 deferred um, taking up an internship until this year. So it's possible yeah. to do it. The gap year that people take seems to be more after the intern year. That seems to be the, you know, if you're taking a gap year, that seems people seem to want to graduate, get through the intern year. And then if you're going to take time out, that seems to be when it happens. Okay. Um, I think that Penang can go yeah, to, to, the, check. to the best of my knowledge the answer is yes um, but it's something I will confirm yeah. it's certainly in the when the application process opens the website does cover that that question is answered the countries and the medical schools who can apply that is um, um, addressed in the information for the applicants. I'm really sorry. I, I yeah. think that they can. I believe that they can, but I, I, we would have to check it for you. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, okay. Well, let's that's great. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you.